How's it going everyone? Uh, welcome to my first video and this will be the first video that we've put up on our YouTube page. The whole point of this video was to, to do a little walk around, uh, the first look for, for us and uh, like we'd sort of said all the way along this, we're going to document the build so we'll call this phase one and this has just got all the stuff that I thought I needed straight off the bat if I was to pull the car out of the dealership. Uh, and want to go camping with it. Um, I'm going to roll the a little bit of a recording that I did on the day. It was my first recording. I was kind of getting used to the camera um, and so it was uh, the drive from sort of leaving my place to, to head down to the Toyota dealership to, to get the new car. So I'll roll that now. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, hopefully it's not too bad. Um, when we come back, we'll, I'll meet you in the garage and we'll have a look at the 200. All right, cheers guys. How's it going? So, exciting day today, a couple of reasons. One, this is the first video that I'm running solo, so that's kind of exciting, kind of weird looking at a camera speaking to it, uh, but I don't get used to that. Second reason is right now I am on the way to pick up the new car and I am well excited for that. This has been something that I've wanted for years and it is, I am literally half an hour away. I'm on my way right now to Melville Toyota to pick up the new Beast. Now, that does come with a little bit of bittersweet because it means that I am getting rid of the 76. Uh, this car has been incredible to us for the last six and a bit years. It has taken us everywhere that we've wanted to go is never broke down it is it is just been incredible the instagram page that we have which is 76 cruise overland is going to change uh that will be sort of released soon and i think i'm going to start a youtube channel if it means that i can you know really get my teeth sunk into making some videos up and getting used to talking to the camera which is really weird um and editing them together then I'm, yeah, if it's going to be like a hobby, then I'm, I'm well up for that. So uh, it's, it's kind of exciting. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, today was just uh, sort of, this is what's going on. I don't know if this camera position is going to be any good. I'll have to see when I actually jump back into the footage because I um, I did no prep work whatsoever. The camera's stuck on with a suction cup, which is all good, but it's sort of looking directly at my open mug. So I have no idea what I'm actually seeing right now. I will get better. Uh, this was just a little touch base sort of thing and uh, we will see what happens. So I, I'm going to try, and, I'm not going to really document picking up the car because I'm still getting used to I'm still getting used to this whole having a camera with me and speaking to people that I'm speaking to the camera. It, I don't know, it's, it's really strange for me, it's kind of, I don't know, it's going to take a little bit of time to get used to. I really want to get some shots of of the, of the two cars side by side because it it really is going to break my heart today sort of giving away the 76 it is it has been incredible but i am looking forward to running the new car now i'm not going to say what it is right now i'm going to sort of cover that later the plan is for this the the new the plan is for the sort of new hobby venture is i'm going to do like a little build video of the car um, how it's coming to me, I put a little bit of money in of the stuff that I value or, or think that how we use the car straight off the bat it is going to be needed. So um, there are certain things that I 100% need from brands bank and new. Um, so we'll call it built, you know, phase one or you know, I'll work that out. I think phase one, whatever. Um, and then the second and the third, I don't know how many we're going to go. If it's anything like my 76, which it shouldn't be because I've done, I've got a little bit more experience now of, of putting together things on a four-wheel drive. 
um, I don't know, maybe four phases. The first phase is already done and that will be the first video. Second phase, I think, will be the electrical side. Third phase will probably be accessories, a few other little major things. There isn't much to do, but it'll be accessories. The last phase will be whatever I use or you, uh, utilize to, to fill space for storage, etc. But again, that'll all be, um, yeah, that'll all be released in the future. So maybe four. Uh, I'm just thinking, I hope I'm not going anything because literally I'm five minutes away. And, anyway. All right, so yeah. I hope the, the, the picture and sounds okay because uh, I didn't put much thought into that. I kind of wish I did. I will do more of these, uh, sort of filling in on, on what else we're going to be doing, but that is the gist of it. We are uh, getting a new car, the 76 is grown, and the Instagram page will change to accommodate the new car, start a YouTube channel, and I will touch on sort of what else we might get up to. All right, catch you for now. Welcome to my shed, uh, home of where the, the 200 lives. So I won't sort of touch on all the specs of the 200, I think that's pretty common, they're, they're everywhere um, and nothing's changed in the newer ones. Um, so we'll get right into the, uh, the front of the car. So, I'll just talk it through. I have put on the ARB, that is the Summit Bar, 63mm. So it's the big tube. So it's the front, colour coded obviously. Um, and I have strapped on the brush rails and the side steps as well. Uh, I had it on the 76. Yeah, I don't think I actually touched the side of the rails, but to have them there uh, is definitely that uh, added bit of protection. I don't really want to have to redo the panels on this car because I dare say it'd be quite expensive. I was going to put the Rhino bar, which is you know pretty much a lot of like a bumper replacement bar or that that sort of look, and I, it was the look that I wanted for the car originally. But these headlights here had an absolute fortune to change, and so I wanted to try and give those lights as much protection as I possibly could. And I think I think this will it sort of doesn't cover the lights, but it but it's got that that loop that should look after them a bit better. So moving into the bar, so we um, I went to run the Bush Ranger Revo S, I think it's called. It's a 12S maybe. So it's a 12,000 pound Dyneema rope. And that's the controller. So it's fully wireless and water rated and I did think about running a warm winch but opted with this one uh, the reviews and everything that I could read wanted claims everything that, that we might have to worry about with a winch um, it comes with the specs are really similar to the warm except it's like a I don't know like a third of the price probably even cheaper than that um, yeah haven't tried it but we'll, we'll try this one out and, and we'll see how it goes it can't be worse than the one I had before, and the one I had before was a real cheap one, so. So that's pretty much the front of the car. Uh, underneath the car, we did put the full, um, I'll take this under, right the way down. I think as far back as past the, the auto box, and so we've got the full underbody protection there, and the two rated recovery points, uh, and they're fully rated, I think they're 8,000 pound. But either way, uh, it's, they're definitely going to cover the car weight. Under the bonnet, um, pretty much all standard at the moment. Um, 
the only thing I have put in at the moment is we have the pre-filler in the back there so that's pre 30 micron uh, there is a water alarm that is that I was meant to get for that that I will get installed in the future so it's just an alarm on the inside that tells me if there's any water in the bowl now I ran the this on my 76 and I uh, didn't have the alarm but I never ever found any water in there um, and we did a bit of traveling with the 76 so I think that's just selective on fuel stations etc um, and across here we've got the Provent 200 so uh, I know one thing that's definitely going to get changed in the future is the airbox uh, there are some issues with the 200 airbox uh, in, in dust ingress so uh, that will 100% get changed out for more than likely a, a moonlight uh, box in snorkel because I ran that on my 76 and and I didn't have any issues at all. This this clean cleanness under here will change probably very soon. Uh, you know, twin bats, all the other stuff that needs to go in here. So uh, all the space that's there at the moment will soon I'll disappear. And and uh, I don't know if that shows all the engine there, but um, that cleanness will will disappear as well the first time we get this out bush. So suspension in here is the. BP 51s so just move my head around here pretty much see that there and the Blackhawk upper control arms so um, I actually wanted to run that in the 76 but uh, at the time I didn't really know how good they were uh, I also thought that with the type of car the 76 was to spend the amount of money that these cost uh, with leafs etc that I might not have got the full function of you know, of these shocks and how actually good they are. Um, I'm hearing now that even having them in a leaf vehicle or a 76, 79, whatever, there is a huge benefit. So uh, when we came to decide on suspension, uh, it was always going to be PP51s. I, I personally think they're the best shock in the market at the moment. So at the moment I knew I was getting a 200, it's going to be PP51s. We've also done the GVM, so it takes it to thousand kilograms which is loads uh, I don't think we'll ever be there as a, as a car side of it weight wise but we do have a little country that we tow we're gonna have a full draw system in the back uh, full, full kit and we will carry the dog and and a few other little bits so we went as high as we can go just because uh, I think it was pretty much the same price to do that or the, the slightly less one in the rear as well, I think the two options, well as far as I'm aware, on the GVM side of it was to run a 400 kilogram or a 600 kilogram constant spring. We went with a 400 kilogram. I always thought that I'll go with a lesser spring, which will probably deal with our weight anyway. And if I need any more than in, in the future, I can just put in airbags, which is still an option. Uh, and it will only be just to bolster up that rear end if it does drop. One thing I have noticed with it, and I knew about it, uh, it's just that I have one now, is that uh, it's a very nose sort of droopy car uh, and I knew the suspension wasn't going to fix that because it was going to be done as a GVM so I wasn't going to be correct, correct in the sort of levelness of the car but I do hope that um, minus the stuff that's still got to get put on the front which is called uh, you know, aerials and, and some accessory stuff with getting a bit of weight in the rear that that drops it down because it's so clear right now but She's definitely sitting still a bit, a bit droopy at the front, which uh, doesn't really bother me. It would be nice to get that, that bun down a little touch. Uh, but anyway, that's pretty much it for the, the front and underneath. So inside, it is still completely standard. Uh, currently, the third row seats are already out. These seats will stay in because we still sort of need to utilize them. But everything else at the moment is completely bog standard. Eventually, once we get our comms and lights, it'll be, you can't really see that, but the switch panel there, we'll probably run out of space because we've got a few things getting put on. The only thing that we have had put on is the, just there on the screen is the Red Arc. That's the Tow Pro Elite, and that's just gonna allow us to get the camper trailer out if the, uh, if, you know, worst case is nothing else happened to the car. It'll still allow us to pull the trailer, which you can to see right now right there 
and yeah, it won't restrict us actually getting out and doing some camping if we did nothing else to the car right now. Eventually, I would love to get the trailer hooked up to the car and, and make sure, you know, give it a tow, see how she goes and you know, get a video of them both together and, and setting up the whole thing. So this is the space that we're going to be playing with. Uh, th these drawers are going to be suited straight off the bat for, for camping uh, with the electrical setup that we're putting in and the, some of the other little mod cons that we want to run. Uh, but again, the next time we see this, which will be a while away, 10 weeks or so, uh, it'll be looking from a couple of a massive space into a really, really kitted out drill system. So. That's pretty much the walk around. Phase one being as it is now, bar work, protection work. Uh, minor engine mods. So pretty much phase one we can class that as the minimum amount of stuff that we need to get it camping right now without changing anything else. Phase two being the electrical, phase three being the drawers, the finishing of the electrical, and phase four will probably be engine performance mods uh, and then we're probably pretty much there. I know it was quick, there isn't a lot of gear on at the moment. You know, pretty much from the front back all the bar work and underbody stuff and, and you know that's pretty much it right now. Where it's going to go from here is there'll, there'll be a couple of videos I think with Jimmy from Grab Me Gear uh, because I think we're going to try and showcase how easy his gear is to go from being in a drawer to you know, at the back of a wagon. Uh, it is so versatile so we'll show how easy it is to get all his gear in the back of a car that has no dedicated storage section just a space and how easy and, and organized it actually is and then we'll do another one when I do get the drawers in because it'll be the same gear and it might be a bit hard because they've adapted to my 76 drawers which may have been or may be slightly bigger than the ones I'm going to get but um, it will still fit in and it'll be so organized so it's I think that's a really really easy way to showcase how good his gear is so big shout out to Jimmy at Grammy Gear because your gear is quality mate and, and I just want to shout one more thing out, and that's to uh, WD Camping Adventures. I'm actually rocking, rocking your your gear right now. Pete and 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 Kareb, I mate, like I wouldn't do this at all. Uh, this was this was a something I'd always wanted to do, uh, and and having been around them a couple of times now, one on a big camp, and the next one, uh, Pete actually helped out Jimmy to record our video that we did for Jimmy's gear. And he, and he gave us some tips and pointers, so um, big big shout out to those guys because I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Uh, and all, I'm messaging Pete, constantly asking him things about editing and stuff, so mate, you're legend boys. So I think I'm going to leave it there. Uh, yeah, any questions, any tips on adjusting the shocks because I haven't even looked at them yet. Uh, tone, G give, me, give, me, give me some advice on tone with the 200 because I'm used to the manual. Yeah, any advice, any tips, any comments, any anything, any ways I'm proving the video because I, you know, this isn't natural for me and I can't suck right now. So stay safe right now. I know the coronavirus and, and, and all that stuff still going about. I think I heard that restrictions are um, lessening, but yeah, I think we all need to stay real vigilant. But everyone stay safe right now and hopefully uh, we'll be able to get out camping and, and you know, I'll on the tracks and whatever else real soon. So it's gonna be gonna be weird saying this, but because uh, that's sort of as much as I want to do. This is my first video, so hopefully I'm gonna get better. But please, you know, subscribe and watch along and, and throw down comments or give me advice, uh, you know, uh, on on how to make the videos better. Uh, the cameras will get better, so that'll help out. My editing will get better because I figured out the edit inside is is you can do some real cool stuff with it, but I gotta really get up to speed on that. I'll try and update the Instagram page as well, so if you don't jump on YouTube, then yeah, just at least jump on Instagram, 200 Cruiser underscore Overland, I'll, I'll link them, I'll put them in the description. This is going to be a little journey that we um, that I want to do, and if people are watching and commenting and interacting, then that's going to be really cool, so uh, I think we'll leave it there, and so yeah, catch you in the next one.